So we're going to start cognitive load theory by talking about cognitive load and cognitive limit and differentiating between the two. Cognitive load is the amount of information a human is trying to process in working memory at any one time. This is basically how hard you're thinking. Cognitive limit is the maximum number of chunks of information a person can process in working memory at any one time. And that happens to be extremely limited. So, I'm going to do a little cognitive limit exercise. I'm going to put up a series of letters, and I'm going to give you about three seconds to memorize them. So, put your pencil down. You can't write these down while they are up. I want you to just look at them, memorize them. Okay, I'll give you about three seconds. Here we go. Okay, now write the letters down as they appeared on the screen. Let's give you a couple seconds to do that. Okay, now we're going to do it again. Ah, I think it's the next slide. Maybe it's not. So, but if it is, I'm going to give you three seconds on those two. Again, put the pencils down and be ready. One. Okay, write those down. All right, everybody got them written down? Well, I'm seeing nobody that's objecting to it. How'd you do? Which one was easier? I'm trying to get responses today. It's like pulling teeth. Um, I'm guessing you found the second one easier. Let's take a look. Why is the second easier? I mean, they're made up of the same letters. They're the exact same letters all the way through. So why is the second one easier? Gosh, just ask that, sorry. They're arranged in, arranged in chunks that make sense to our mind. Okay. Magic number seven plus or minus two. There's a man named George Miller. He did a lot of uh, very seminal research into limitations of the human mind. And he found that, or hypothesis, hypothesized that the human brain can process seven plus or minus two chunks of information at any one time. That's actually a very small number. Recent studies have shown that that may be as low as five plus or minus two, even four plus or minus two, and some people are suggesting three. So that's not a lot. Let's take a look at what we had there. How many chunks in the first one? 12 actually, because every letter is a single bit of information because the organization doesn't make any sense. But if you arrange them so they make sense, W-O-U, I-B-M, E-S-L, U-S-A, suddenly the 12 bits of information become four bits of information. And that's within our capacity to kind of look at and memorize. Our cognitive limit is why we arrange information in the form of schemas. We've just talked about schemas, and schemas are organizational frameworks for information. They are relationships, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to take information and make it into one big chunk. If you remember, the, we, we were focusing on island. And actually, as soon as you call up island, then maybe you're calling a beach, and you're calling up sand, you're calling up water all around, maybe there's boats on it, houses. All of those are one chunk of information. Not 12, 13, 15, 20. Because they're all connected, they're one chunk. And that's, again, one of the reasons that we organize information that way, because it's easier for us to process and easier to store. How do we do that? How do we organize information into chunks? Man, I was hoping you would ask. So we're going to return now to the main lecture. And we'll, or excuse me, return to your reading. And hopefully that will provide an answer for you.